Yes. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I um, met Dirk Benedict in Memorabilia 2003. Yes. I asked um, Dirk Benedict what um, George Peppard is like as a person. He said to me that um, George Peppard is very difficult to work with and he pulls pranks. <laughs> um, I saw you on I Love 1984. You also said that um, George Peppard is um, very difficult to work with. What does Dirk Benedict mean that George Peppard is pulling pranks and what do you mean when you say George Peppard is very difficult to work with? What is his personality like? All right. Um, George was uh, uh, extraordinarily professional in many ways. The very first day that I came to the set of the A-Team, I walked into the makeup trailer and there was George and he came up and said, how do you do? George Peppard here. I'm not a very nice man. That, 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 so help me God, that was what he said to me. And I'm, well, uh, no, he said, no, I used to be a drunk. I tell everybody that. I'm not a drunk anymore. Uh, my wife says I hit her with a frying pan. She'd be dead if I had hit her with a frying pan. <laughs> <clears throat> but George was a movie star. You know, he, he was, you know, the, the uh, carpetbaggers. Um, uh, he, 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 was a, he was a huge flame in New York City in the actor's studio. Women were just running after him. He said, I've, I've run through $30 million. Don't you make the same mistake. <laughs> See, that, that movie stars almost, they sometimes think that everybody lives like they do. But, uh, one of, but, but George was uh, very competitive. And Mr. T was really the huge draw when the show opened. And George didn't like that because he was the star. And he, he once, uh, when the show hit number one for the first time in the first season, George got up on the hood of a car and said, as the star of this show, and Mr. T turned around and went into his trailer. And Dirk and I were s left standing there. So um, George took control of the set, in essence. And um, after the first five or six shows, and when we were number one, George decided he was going to go home at 5 o'clock. I mean, normally, you shoot about 14 hours a day. But George decided to go home at 5 o'clock. And Mr. T said, well, if George going home, I'm going home. <laughs> so T left at 5 o'clock, which left Dirk and I standing by the gas pumps. Right? And we would get a call from Stephen Cannell saying, can you help me out, pal? Can you help me out? Can you talk to them and keep them, you know? So, so Dirk and I would come at 6 and work in the morning. Then the afternoon would be filled with T and George. And then at 6, 6 or 5.30, Dirk and I would come on and finish the day and be there till 9 or 10 o'clock. So that's why George was difficult. Uh, he was always playing chess games with... Uh, Stephen Cannell. If he, did, if he didn't like the script, you'd walk in in the morning and there'd be an entire page blacked out with uh, Sharpies, right? Blacked out. And George would say, this is all I'm going to say, pal. <laughs> and of course, your lines are completely dependent upon everything that he said on that page. <laughs> so that's why George was difficult. Um, but, he, but he did have a very good eye for scripts. He knew when things weren't working, uh, and um, you could trust him in, in that area. But he, he, he played a lot of games like that. Now, pranks, George, George would love to throw cold water on you if you're sitting down. He'd get on top of a, of a trailer and throw a bucket of water on you. But you couldn't do the same thing to George. <laughs> you couldn't do the same thing to him. And so he and Dirk had a few scuffles uh, because of that sort of thing. Uh, I think once somebody, somebody took a spray bottle and sprayed under George's, George's arm. And George went, <gasps> and anybody else would have been laughing, but not George. No. Uh, when one of our producers had a heart attack, and this was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, George always came to work in a running suit, a blue running suit with perfectly polished white shoes. And um, John Ashley was the name of this producer. And he had a heart attack. And George went. And 
and left the set and came back with his little briefcase and said, John Ashley's had a heart attack. I'm next. And walked off. That's because he wanted to get home, home early. <laughs> but that's why George was difficult. But, he, he, but he, was, he was a movie star. I mean, he truly was the Blue Max, the Carpetbaggers, Moon, um, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's. He was a matinee idol, and he knew that he was the star. So does that answer your question? Um, yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome.